Welcome back. This is episode two of the Computer Craft series, and I'm exploring. Okay, found this uh, outpost, and I'm going to break this guy free. I'm sure there's some pillagers running around somewhere. Yep, there's one right there. Good job, buddy. Ooh, a goat horn. Excited to use that. Can hear my buddy getting attacked downstairs. Help him out in a sec. Time to call in some reinforcements. Be really cool if if the goat horns actually gave you some effects or like summoned in some extra mobs to help you or something. Good job, good teamwork. You know, I was really hoping to find an allay, so sad face. Well, I had some fun exploring, but that did not end well. I got tridented to death. Had to go back a few times to get all my stuff. So I decided to come back here and run my digging turtle. So I'm gonna pull up the excavate program. And I'm gonna run help. Excavate is a program for mining turtles. When excavate is run, the turtle will mine a rectangular shaft into the ground, collecting blocks as it goes, and return to the surface once bedrock is hit. So I'm going to run excavate, and I'm going to have it dig out a 10 by 10 shaft. And there it goes. I'll come back later to check on its progress. And as you can see, it's chugging along nicely now. It's gone down a few levels. There's uh, some exposed iron down there that I can get to. So I'm going to go ahead and take some of that out right now. Might as well since I'm here. Great. So now I can just have this guy dig down to the bottom and I don't even have to do a thing. So I built a little side hut for my villagers. And I thought now would be a good time to start breeding them. Look at this guy. He really looks up to his parents. All right, back to check on my turtle. Looks like he's stopped. Probably needs some fuel. A little bit of redstone and iron that he brought back. So uh, let's check out how much fuel he needs or has left. Zero, okay, so I'll have to bring some fuel back to this guy in a bit. Thought it was about time that I started working on automating tree harvesting. So I've got this felling turtle. You'll see it's got this diamond axe on the side and I've planted a bunch of trees over here. I found every tree in the game and planted one of each in this general area and I'm going to start by automating cutting down oak trees. Now there's the short trees and there's the tall trees. I figured I'd just start with the short tree um, just because it's so simple you just have the single trunk. So I'm going to get started programming my turtle. I'm done programming, so it's time to demo the turtle. If I right-click on it, it'll start. It'll go forward and then go up until it reaches the last log, and then it'll come back down. 
Now some oak trees are a little bit more complex than the smaller ones. They've got all these branches coming off. And so I'm just going to have the turtle go straight up and back down and control the height of the trees by putting a slab at the top so I don't have to worry about missing the branches. This program works equally well with birch trees. And for now, I'm going to have my turtle ignore big trees like the dark oak or the acacia. So when I place the turtle and start it up, it's going to say, I don't know what to do with this. After testing my lumberjack script, I decided to prototype a tree farm. You'll see I have a turtle set up here in front of a modem and some computers. If I place saplings down in front of these observers, it sends a, a redstone signal. And so the idea is when a tree is fully grown, then the turtle knows to go and harvest the trees. I'm here on a trip to look for some nether quartz and discovered the fearsome lava llama. Seriously though, what is this guy doing here? Frogs for the frog light farm just need to build them their own place now so they can hang out and I can feed them and get some more frogs. Check it out, I've got a fully functional tree farm now. Learned a lot from my prototype and changed up to the design a little bit. You can see I've got three rows of trees here. And I've got some observers set up with some pistons. Pistons are sending an update downwards to some mechanisms uh, down below the tree farm. And I've got some water pushing items into these, these hoppers. And then the hoppers are all pushing items over into this barrel over here. And then the items from that barrel are pulled from the computer, sorted, and then stored in the appropriate barrels over here. Now this barrel right here is where the turtle dumps its items, and then the items are also sorted that way as well. We've got the saplings, we've got the logs here, and also we have a disk drive over here. And the disk drive is running a program that all three of the computers down here below are running. Now each of these computers are receiving signals from the pistons up above. So when the observer above detects a change with the tree, sends a, an update down here to the computer, and each of these computers are receiving that same update. Okay, so I'm going to grab a turtle, and I'll show you how this farm works. I'm going to place the turtle right here, and I'm going to make sure that there's some saplings in here to get started. And the first thing the turtle's gonna do is go refill on saplings. And I didn't realize it's gonna knock down this item frame. And the turtle's off to complete its first job. If you pay attention here, you'll see the piston go off. And that's just because the observer updated that the sapling isn't there. Now, the whole system keeps track of that so that the turtle, when it comes down, it'll replace the sapling and then it'll go back to its starting position. And then it'll start its next job. And if we take a look at the turtle's inventory, you'll see that we've got some logs, sticks, saplings, and it hasn't dumped those in the inventory system yet. It's gonna wait till its jobs are completed. And these jobs are created when, so I showed you the computers underneath the farm, right? And those computers are, sending updates back to the main computer uh, when they detect that a tree has grown. And the main computer maintains a list of current jobs. 
And so when the turtle starts up, it gets that list of jobs and then goes through each of those jobs until it's finished completion. Now, this could be a little bit more efficient rather than having it go back to the starting place each time. It could, you know, just keep track of where it is relative to the next job. I thought that would be a little bit more complicated, so I just have it coming back to the starting position each time. Though I still think this is more efficient than just having the turtle constantly going around checking to see if a tree has grown and just receiving updates from the observers instead because otherwise it's just a big uh, waste of fuel to have the turtle constantly checking on the trees. Alright, so the turtle's finished its jobs and it's dumping all of its inventory into that barrel up there and then going back to its starting position you can see the barrel's empty and the items have already been sorted into their barrels so I've got a lot of logs there and you can see it's looking for jobs but there's no jobs found in the queue so it's just going to sit there and wait for new jobs so it's going to wait for updates from each of these observers and I'll go ahead and pick up some of these saplings here and just uh, kind of drop those into the water so that it goes through the chutes and back into the system. As you can probably tell, the system isn't perfect. I could definitely use any ideas you've got. Uh, please leave them in the comments and I'd love to implement them in a following video. So I came back to check on my excavating turtle and you'll notice that it's just completely stopped. If I open it up, you can see there's no program running. And so I'm just gonna pick this thing up and I'm gonna have to place it again. Now I've actually written my own excavate program to avoid this happening again and I'll show you what that does. I've actually created a separate video on this and I'll include a link in the description if you want to see more about how this works. But what I'm about to do is I'm going to save the game and then I'll return to the game and you'll notice that the turtle is still running the excavate program. All right, I wanted to show you guys a little something I've been working on. I've got this pathway made of the crimson fences and trim lights. Really like the look of this, and it should make getting around the nether a lot easier. I also like this archway I made with these magma cubes. Looks, looks pretty cool. Going down here into this huge cavern. I, I just love this. I'd like to eventually build some, uh, make some turtle programs to have the turtles build bridges across all this because there's all these floating structures out there that I'm going to want to explore for sure. And getting a turtle to build bridges should make things a lot easier for me. And so I've got this pathway leading all the way up to the nether fortress over there. So pretty cool. Love the look of this and I'm going to continue this uh, throughout the nether as I build ways to get around. And that's it for today's episode. I hope you had some fun watching my new builds and I'll catch you in the next episode.